The new M4 MacBook Air surprised me because quite frankly, I was not expecting Apple to make the value proposition this strong. See, before Apple kept the M2 MacBook around when they introduced the M3 model at a higher price point, but this time the M4 comes in at 999. And now with 16 gigabytes of standard RAM, this is a pretty much unbeatable package. And it fulfills Steve Jobs' dream with the original MacBook Air from 17 years ago. So today I wanna to talk about why this new MacBook Air, even though it's just a chip swap, fits into this larger picture and why the MacBook Air as a product segment is probably the most important computer of all time. Now we have to preface this story by remembering that the original MacBook Air kinda sucked. Yeah, as much as we love to reminisce over that iconic manila envelope ad, the original MacBook Air was absolutely packed full of compromise. Steve Jobs did not wanna sacrifice on performance when making the world's first Ultrabook, so he had Intel shrink the packaging of their CPU to accommodate this tiny logic board. However, the thermal solution that they implemented for that machine was so inadequate that if you did absolutely anything on that computer, it would thermal throttle down to a single core, making it dramatically slower than all other MacBooks at the time. And while the MacBook Air was the first Mac ever to feature SSD storage, it was a $1,000 option, and if you didn't pay for it, you got a hard drive straight out of an iPod. And that was pretty much unusable. But despite all of those flaws, the original MacBook Air doesn't really look that different from the current one. And that's because it basically invented the modern laptop aesthetic that manufacturers are still using. It was the first MacBook that had a unibody design language and it was so much thinner than any other device at the time. Now over the years, things have changed a little bit and this new M4 MacBook Air is not the thinnest or the lightest or the smallest footprint laptop that you can buy, but it it does retain the key concepts of that original MacBook Air. And in fact, I would argue that the current generation MacBook Air is the first time that this machine has lived up to its fullest potential. So let's compare this new M4 MacBook Air to the M2 and M3 models that it replaces, figure out why this thing is such a great value and how it fulfills the original MacBook Air's promise right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by iFlyTech AI Note Air 2, the perfect intersection of a smart e-ink tablet and AI assistance. AI Note Air 2 is a thin, lightweight tablet with a paper-like e-ink display it's like having a notebook, e-reader, and translation tool all in one. And with the added convenience of a slim protective case, it slips into your bag easily. You can write directly on the screen, or use voice to text to transcribe for you, or even both at once. You can even play back the recorded audio that was transcribed. These core functions, along with integrated AI, enable a ton of use cases. Manage schedules easily with smart AI sorting to create to-do lists and checklists. Record meetings to have them easily summarized in plain text that's easy to mark up and annotate. There's even a camera to scan and convert physical documents to digital PDFs. AI Note Air 2 is the smartest notebook you've ever owned, and the possibilities are endless. So to learn more, check out the link in the description down below. Big thanks to iFlyTech for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the video. Now dropping the price for this new model from 1099 to 999 might not seem like a super huge deal, but it does have a pretty impressive ripple effect on the rest of the MacBook Air range. You can find M2 MacBook Airs on sale for as low as $800 right now, and the M1s are now dropping under 400 used on eBay. And of course, all of those machines are a fantastic value, but with the M4 chip, I'm really excited to see how this new one performs. So I put this MacBook Air through my usual suite of benchmarks to see how different the M4 chip is going to perform in this fanless package. And starting with Cinebench 2024, it's not really surprising, but you are going to lose about 20% of the performance for a sustained CPU workload like this. However, that being said, if we look at the difference in performance from the M4 MacBook Air compared to the M2 MacBook Air, it is a dramatic increase. And the same is visible in the GPU test, where this time we found that the difference between the full M4 chip in the Mac Mini and this binned M4 in the MacBook Air 
is not very substantial. It's holding up really well here. Similarly, in Geekbench 6, we can see that the MacBook Air is ever so slightly behind the Mac Mini. Granted, this is a less intensive test, so the difference is smaller. And the same is visible over in the GPU test. Here you can see basically the difference is we have two more cores on that full M4 chip. Switching gears over to Blender Classroom on the CPU test, this really underscores the differences between the M4 and this fanless architecture. However, it is substantially faster than the M2 and M3 chips. And surprise, surprise, the same is visible in the GPU test. We do gain 20 seconds over the M4, but it is substantially faster than the M3 and especially the M2. So how is it that in some cases the MacBook Air is significantly slower than a Mac Mini, but in others it's really a very minor difference? Well, the key is the duration of the workload. If you're running Cinebench or a 10 minute Blender CPU render, you're gonna heat soak this chassis and with no active cooling it has no choice but to pull back on performance. But with the shorter one minute GPU test, it's not gonna be as big a deal. So when picking a fanless Mac, you gotta keep in mind how sustained your workload is, and that will inform how big of an impact it will have on you. But when we zoom out and we look at the MacBook Air as a category, Apple Silicon, and especially now with the M4 chip, is what really made this product come alive. Six or seven years ago when reviewing a MacBook Air, I would have said something to the effect of, well, if you're only doing basic tasks and you know that you're not gonna need more performance, then the MacBook Air will probably be enough for you. But that is quite simply no longer the case. It's been true since the M1 MacBook Air, but now even more so, my recommendation is if you're buying a new Mac, you really need to justify why you need anything more than a MacBook Air because these things are ridiculously capable. And you'll also notice that I haven't complained a single time about the fact that the M4 chip in the MacBook Air is slower than it would be in a Mac Mini. And that's because it simply doesn't matter. The M4 chip is simply so powerful that even if you knock 20% off of its performance, it's still that good. But you might be wondering something at this point. With the M4 adding so much additional performance to the same chassis, even though it's painted blue, it's pretty much identical in every other way, how does that affect the thermals? Well, let's do a little bit of investigating. So we've got Cinebench 2024 here. Let's pull up the multi-core test and we'll see what happens to the thermals. Already very interesting. Look how much quicker the M4 has reached 90 degrees Celsius and we're already at 100. But interestingly, the efficiency cores on the M4 are running cooler than they are on the M2. Here, all of our cores are 90 to 98. Whereas on the M4, we've got some running at 108 on the performance, but under 90 on the efficiency. All right, now we've been going for a minute and a half and all of our cores are in the red. They're all over 100 degrees on the M2, but not on the M4. There is something really interesting going on with these efficiency cores. That is really unexpected. And it's pretty stable as well. About half of our efficiency cores are under 90 with half right about 90 to 94. And our performance cores are just glued to 104 at this point. But holy cow, look at how hot the M2 is. So at first I was going, well, the M4 is running hotter, but now overall the M2 seems to be running hotter. And at the end of the day, the M4 is giving you dramatically more performance, even though the chip behavior is different. And look, I don't love the fact that on pretty much every Apple Silicon MacBook, they will let the CPU performance cores get up to over 100 degrees Celsius. But look, at the end of the day, they're the ones that make the laptop and the software and the firmware and the silicon. So I guess it's fine. And another important comparison worth making is the disk speed, because remember this base model M2 MacBook Air had a bit of controversy when they had only a single NAND, and almost immediately you can see the difference that it makes from having multiple NAND chips. In fact, it's almost twice as fast in the read. That is a very big difference. And you can really see how much of a difference this makes in the real world if we load Death Stranding. So let's see how much faster the M4 chip does that. Wow, and we're already in. 
That was definitely a couple of seconds faster. So I've turned the settings down. When I run my benchmarks, I'm in 4K at the highest settings, so it was 19 FPS, not super playable. But now that we've turned it down to 1440p at default graphics settings, we've got a much more playable 45 FPS compared to 32. So let's go down to 1080p and see how much of a difference that makes. Wow, that makes a really big difference. On the M4 chip, we're now locked at 60. Once we're able to hit that V-Sync and be at our screen refresh rate, it just feels so much better. The M2 chip is definitely playable now. We're getting 47, 48 FPS, but man, going from 48 to 60 just makes a huge, huge difference. So back at the beginning of this video when I said that this newest generation of MacBook Air is finally fulfilling the dream of the original MacBook Air, this is what I meant. It finally feels like after 17 years, you can buy a base model MacBook Air without even blinking. In the past, there was always a little bit of a trade-off. Even the M1 MacBook Air, which was 999, only had 128 gigs of storage. Then the M2, you had eight gigs of RAM and that single NAND. So people were kind of like, oh, maybe don't buy the base model. Then the M3 came out and it was $1,100. And it was like just a little bit too expensive. But now the M4 has come along. It has 16 gigs of RAM. It has a really fast SSD. It's 999 bucks and its performance is really, really good. There is no compromise. This thing is just the best value laptop, period. And I know you might think that I'm being overly gushing about this M4 MacBook Air. After all, it's really not that different from the M3 or the M2. And you could very well make the argument that it would be a good idea to go buy a refurb M2 MacBook Air for like 650 or 700 bucks. You still get most of the same stuff. And sure, if you don't care about the performance, then that might be a good idea. But if you do care just a little bit about what's under the hood, the M4 MacBook Air is finally a no compromise laptop. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about the M4 MacBook Air and the history of this product in general over the past 17 years. Do you agree with me that this is the first no compromise MacBook Air? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for more content like this. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.